Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is strictly dominant mixed strategies. We've seen in the past how one peer strategy can strictly dominate another peer strategy, but we haven't seen how any of this works with mixed strategies. Now, however, we have at least a decent understanding about how mixed strategies work, and so we can apply it to this. And this is the topic I cover in Lesson 1.7 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. You can check the video description for more information on that. So the game we're going to be looking at today is this one right here. Player 1 has three strategies, up, middle, and down. Player 2 has two strategies, left and right. Now, if you'd like to, as an exercise for yourself, you can pause the video right now and verify what I'm about to say, but there is no pure strategy that strictly dominates another pure strategy in this game. So if we're just using iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies, if we only looked at pure strategies here, we couldn't do a thing to this game. But let's talk a little bit more about strict dominance and mixed strategies. If you find a mixture between two strategies, or potentially more in a larger game, and those two strategies, or that mixture between those two strategies, strictly dominates another strategy, then you can eliminate that last strategy immediately. And in fact, you should eliminate that last strategy immediately. The reason for this is that strictly dominated strategies are irrational, and it doesn't matter whether a pure strategy or a mixed strategy strictly dominates them, it still just doesn't make any sense to choose that strictly dominated strategy when you could play that other strategy, whether it's a pure strategy or mixed strategy instead, and do better regardless of what the other player is doing. So if we can find a strictly dominant mixed strategy or a mixed strategy that strictly dominates one of the pure strategies here, we can get rid of that pure strategy and then proceed solving the game just how we've always done in the past. So how about this? How about if player one plays up with probability one half and down with probability one half? What's going to happen there? Well, if player one is doing that and player two is going left, then half the time he earns three, and half the time he earns negative one. And so that averages out to being worth one. And that one is worth more than the zero that player one would get from playing middle. So that mixed strategy is better than middle when player two is playing left. How about right? Well, if player one is keeping the same mixed strategy and player two is playing right, then half the time player one gets negative one. Half the time he plays down and gets two and that averages out to being a positive one-half. And so that positive one-half is also better than if player one chooses middle, because middle, again, is worth zero to him here. So regardless of what player two chooses, whether it's left or right, or any mixture between left and right, player one gets more from playing this mixed strategy between up and down than he does from playing this middle strategy. And so by the rules that we've looked at in the past, this is the definition of strict dominance. And so we can get rid of middle because middle is a strictly dominated strategy. And when we do that, we end up with this just regular two by two game that we are pretty comfortable with dealing with by now. And we should see here that this is going to have no pure strategy Nash equilibria. The reason for that is that we've essentially developed this guessing game like matching pennies here where player one wants the up left outcome or the down right outcome, but player two wants the down left outcome or the down or the up right outcome outcome rather. And so there aren't going to be any pure strategy Nash equilibria, but this means that there's going to be a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So we can get a little bit more practice in with that mixed strategy algorithm before we move on to other topics in game theory. So let's just run through this mixed strategy algorithm one more time here. So we're going to solve for player one's mixed strategy. We have to ask ourselves what player two's expected utility is for left and what our expected utility is for right and set those two things equal to each other. So some percentage of the time, player two is going to get negative one. That's when player one selects up with probability sigma up. And then the rest of the time, she's going to get two from playing left. So the expected utility for left is sigma up, the probability player one plays up times negative one, plus one minus sigma up, the probability player one plays down times two. So that's the expected utility for left. The expected utility for right is some percentage of the time, player one's playing up and player two's getting one. The rest of the time, player one is playing down and player two's getting negative one. So her expected utility for right is the probability player one plays up times this one right here. And you add that to the probability player one plays down and multiply that by the negative one here. So we just set those two expected utilities equal to each other, just as we've done in the past. So this is equal to this. And then that will tell us what sigma u, what value, or what probability of player one playing sigma up, or what rather, what probability player one plays up that leaves player two indifferent. 
And if we just work through that, we end up getting sigma up is equal to 3 fifths. So if player 1 is playing up with probability 3 fifths and down with probability 2 fifths, player 2 is indifferent between her pure strategies, which means she's allowed to mix. And so if we just run through the algorithm on the other way, we'll get to the mixed strategy Nash, uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. So now we're asking ourselves what player one's expected utility is for up. We're then going to get the expected utility for playing down. We're going to set those two things equal to each other, and we'll solve for the probability distribution for player two that makes player one indifferent. So in this case, if player one's playing up, then some percentage of the time player one's getting three, the rest of the time he's getting negative one. So his expected utility for up is the probability player two plays left times this three, plus the probability that player two plays right. That's one minus the probability that she plays left. And you multiply that by that negative one here, and that's player one's expected utility for up. Now we do it for down. So some percentage of the time player one's getting negative one, the rest of the time he's getting two. So the probability of player one playing left times negative one, plus the probability that player two plays right times this two, that when you add them together is the expected utility of player one for playing down. And now we just set those two things equal to each other. So this is equal to this. And that leads us to this phrase right here. And then you do some algebraic manipulation. You eventually get that sigma left is equal to 3 sevenths. So the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium looks like this. Player 1 plays up with probability 3 fifths and down with probability 2 fifths. Player 2 plays left with probability 3 sevenths and right with probability 4 sevenths. We know that there isn't going to be any sort of stable strategy for player 1. No Nash equilibrium for player 1 where he's playing middle. And the reason for that is because middle is just an irrational strategy when some mixture is better than playing middle. In this case, we saw that the mixture of half-half is better than playing middle. It's also true that the mixture that we found in the Nash equilibrium is better than middle. You can verify that on your own as well. Anyway, that takes us through our look at strict dominance. Now, we haven't looked at another type of dominance. There's one type of dominance that we've gone through that's strict dominance. We've done a pretty solid job covering it so far, but the other type of dominance is called weak dominance, and it's a lot more tricky to use than strict dominance. And so in the next video, we will start talking about what weak dominance is and why it's so much more tricky than strict dominance is. Join me in that video. Take care.